Hi, I'm Dr. Nupur Shah, a cardiology fellow from University of South Alabama. Today, I have a pleasure of interviewing Dr. Eric Klug. He's going to talk to us about his new trial, Liberate HR trial. So, Dr. Klux, it's a pleasure for you to be here, and thank you for the opportunity for Fits on the Go to give us a, a input on the trial. So, we have heard about the Liberate HEFH trial from the European Heart Journal, where it had a promising uh, result of reduction in the LDL by more than 50%, and also helping to reduce ApoB and lipoprotein little a. Can you tell us more about the Liberate HR trial and how the drug uh, Lerodalcibab is and just the mechanism of action of the drug, please? Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to interact on this platform and to discuss Liberate HR, which is a, essentially an efficacy and safety trial looking at a third generation PCSK9 inhibitor known as Lerodalcibab. Now, it's an unusual drug, it's the only adnectin which essentially means it comes from the human fibronectin. It's a small protein, the atomic mass on its own is 11 kilodaltons, and when it's genetically connected to human serum albumin, it's 77 kilodaltons, and therefore has a more prolonged half-life when it's connected to human serum albumin, and it's a half-life of about 15 days. So Liberate HR was a trial to look at the efficacy and safety of Lerodalcipep in a group of patients who were either having cardiovascular disease or at very high risk for cardiovascular disease or high risk for cardiovascular disease. And we enrolled patients who had been on stable background statin therapy plus other oral lipid lowering agents for at least four weeks prior to entry into the trial. And patients were randomized two to one to Lerodalcipep given for 48 weeks, monthly injection, compared to matching placebo. And then they returned at weeks 50, which is a peak visit, and week 52, which is a trough visit, to assess for their primary endpoints. The co-primary endpoints in the trial was percentage reduction in LDL cholesterol, as well as the absolute reduction in LDL cholesterol but the percentage reduction was assessed at week, 50, at week 50 and then the mean of week 50 and 52. Okay. So can you tell us what would be the difference between the lerodalcibab and the already PCSK9 inhibitor, the monoclonal antibodies, and the RNA inhibitor in glycerin that we have? How would this be a novel agent but different from that that we already have? Important question, and maybe we go back to the initial part, which is, the monoclonal antibodies are, are bigger molecules, uh, require more milliliters to be injected. So if you give the monoclonal antibodies like Evalucumab and Alarucumab, you've got to give them as big volumes monthly. And I believe in the United States that hasn't been popular because you'd have to have a nine-minute auto-injector infusion or if you're going to give it as an injection, two times three mil injections or three times two mil injections to get the 420 milligram dose of, say, alirucumab every month. So the important difference with PC, this PCSK9 inhibitor um, is that it's a smaller molecule, can be administered at 1,2 mils volume, and as well as that, it's stable at room temperature. So the other PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies need to be refrigerated. So those are probably the biggest difference. The action of uh, binding to PCSK9, not allowing PCSK9 to interact with the LDL receptor, increasing LDL receptor recycling, removing more LDL cholesterol from the system is all the same. Okay, that, yeah, that's good to know that the and storage is easier as, and this injection would be once a month rather than once in two weeks. And if it's a once a month, it won't be like long infusion time as nine minutes as the other monoclonal antibodies were. And the other important thing we didn't say is in Clizaran, which acts purely on the liver to reduce PCSK9, ignores almost the 20 to 25% of PCSK9 that is created in the rest of your organs. So that's why the reduction on LDL cholesterol within Clizaran is less than that with the PCSK9 antibodies or with this PCSK9 new third generation. Okay, and last question would be, are there any safety concerns uh, with this drug? 
So the safety, the safety trial, the safety part of the trial showed that the adverse events were similar in both arms of the trial. The one important adverse event was injection site reactions, and there were more, up to a 7% in the liradelzepeb arm. They were mild to moderate, they were transient, and they did not result in any more discontinuations in the liradelzepeb arm compared to the placebo arm. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Kluck, for being with us and giving us some insight about the trial. Liberate Pleasure. Trial. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to watch more videos like this, please check out youtube.com slash fits on the go and follow us on Twitter at hashtag fits on the go.